Hi, I'm Scott Gentile of A2A Simulations, and welcome to an Accusim P51 Mustang familiarization video. In the year 2008, the Accusim revolution began with the release of the Boeing 377 Stratocruiser. This P51 brings us to the seventh generation of Accusim. In this video, we'll walk you through the systems, starting with the landing gear and the flaps. We'll show you how to start up the engine and taxi. We'll give you some takeoff tips from our P-51 pilots. We'll demonstrate both slow and high speed stalls, dives, and we'll wrap it up with a quick tour of the maintenance hangar. But before we get started, I just wanted to show you this incredible model. I'm using the slew to rotate this aircraft. This is just one lighting condition, by the way. This plane looks amazing at dawn. Okay, let's set this aircraft on the ramp. Here we have our P-51 Mustang in a proper state of rest, with the gear fairing doors open and the flaps down. Currently, there is no pressure in the hydraulic system, as you can see in this gauge right here. The landing gear and flaps are moved by the hydraulic pressure system, which is powered by an engine-driven hydraulic pump. Okay, let's get the aircraft up on jacks so we can demonstrate the system. We added the ability to jack your aircraft up starting with the P-40 and it's been a very popular feature with our customers. All right, now we've added an auxiliary hydraulic pump that allows us to pressurize the hydraulic system while the engine is off and the aircraft is up on jacks. Now keep in mind, when you run the engine and with hydraulic pressure, these doors automatically come back up. Now that we have hydraulic pressure, when we raise our landing gear lever, those fairing doors will unlock and open, the gear struts will retract and lock in the up position, then the fairing doors will retract and also lock in the up position. This is very important that you know how this landing gear is retrieved in this aircraft. Okay, let's raise the gear. Three, two, one, go. Fairing doors unlock and open. Landing gear unlocks and retracts. The landing gear will lock up. There you go. Fairing doors come up. And lock. Okay, both the landing gear and the doors are locked up. Since the flaps are also powered by the hydraulic system, we can raise and lower them as well. There you go. Flaps coming up. Now that we have everything powered and up, let's practice a hydraulic failure. Pulling the emergency gear release handle unlocks those fairing doors and releases all hydraulic pressure from the system and they just fall by their own weight. Now we have no hydraulic pressure and that gear is being held up by the locks. Turn off the pump. Now when I lower this landing gear lever, all it's gonna do is unlock that gear and it's gonna fall by its own weight. Three, two, one. Now the gear might not extend out all the way, and as we showed you in a previous training video, rocket to lock it. So since we're on jacks, what we do is just push our emergency gear handle back in and turn on our hydraulic pump. All right. So that's just a quick look at how the landing gear works in your Accusim P-51 Mustang. <clears throat> now let's see, I'm gonna lower the aircraft. I also wanted to show you something about our pilot. He not only looks the part, but he acts the part. He's constantly thinking. 
He's looking around. He checks his instruments. He scans the skies. Okay, let's get you in the cockpit. But I want to pull up a different model here. Let me give you a close look at this aircraft. That's a beautiful paint. Over on the left, you can see the GPU. It's the auxiliary ground power unit. Okay, let's get inside and fire this old girl up. We have two different cockpits for the Accusum Mustang. Here you see the classic World War II painted green. And we made these nice natural wooden floorboards that are so popular in Mustangs flying today. I think it's worth noting that at A2A, we build our cockpits from the inside out. The frame gets built and the pieces get installed. And when we couple this visual with the physics and the sounds of AccuSim, yeah, it's just a perfect fusion. And here we have the Dark Horse, the classic Korean War era black. It's just amazing what this cockpit looks like in black. You're gonna find that this aircraft not only looks and feels alive, but it sounds alive. That is one of the many sounds we recorded from Vlado Lennox beautiful Moonbeam Mixed Wine. Okay, let me show you some of the main systems in the cockpit, starting from left to right. This is the flaps lever to the left here. We want that to be up. Ram air on, carb heat off. Now trim is dependent on your aft tank. If you have your aft tank removed, like they have in many P-51s today, and this is supported in AccuSim, think 600, six degrees rudder, zero aileron, and zero elevator. If your aft tank is installed, but it's empty, you wanna add two degrees of nose down forward trim. If you have an aft tank that is full, then you wanna have four degrees nose down trim. Okay, our landing gear lever is down, and we have fuel in our left tank. Let me show you how the mixture works. That's idle cutoff, run, and emergency rich. We start with a mixture on idle cutoff. Our propeller forward. I wanna show you a brilliant little feature on this Mustang. It's one of the earliest HOTAS setups. It's hands on throttle and stick. You're able to adjust your gun sight range without taking your hand off the throttle. You simply twist the grip. Now watch this. You see that black cable passing through the hole in the dash? That cable is similar to something you'd find in an old lawnmower. Now watch. Let me uh, set this throttle back and let me show you something. Watch, I'll twist the grip. You see? It's just driving that steel cable through the other end. You can even move the throttle back, or even full forward, and still adjust the uh, gun sight. Also, I want you to take a look at that little clip back there. When the throttle is resting on that little wire, that is your maximum takeoff power. Now to adjust this, move your throttle to about 90%. You can then pull up our little utility here, and you can fine tune it. I have a detent in this throttle, so I just match the detent to this position. Now, if we want war emergency power, what we do is we're gonna push this throttle through the wire. Now watch that wire. Boom, see? That is war emergency power. Now, for the remainder of the flight, the wire is broken. And when we advance the throttle all the way forward, we should be at about 67 inches manifold pressure. If you notice, we've given you two red lines here, 61 inches before the wire is broken, and 67 inches when you break through that wire. It's that simple. Okay, continuing on, we set our altitude over here at about 100 feet in this airfield, and we uncage our attitude gyro. All right, while we're still looking center, we wanna look down and make sure our controls are clear. Make sure you have full deflection. And also, same with the rudder. All right, now that our controls are free and clear, we're gonna push on our brakes and set our parking brake. 
And over here, we actually want our ignition to be off. I'll explain that a bit during startup. And our fuel cutoff is on. Okay, another very important thing in your Mustang that you need to know. If you look down here at your fuel tank selector, if you have a full left tank, you always want to be drawing from that tank first. Because the engine has a return fuel line that dumps the fuel into that left tank. So there has to be room in that tank for the fuel to go. Because if that tank is full and you're drawing fuel from another tank, the extra fuel is just going to be sent out the overflow and wasted. So understand that during your flight, you can see as much as 10 gallons an hour flowing into that left tank. Okay, moving to the right side, we turn our battery on. We check our right tank for fuel. Okay, and with the battery on, we come over here and we check our radiator flaps. Under normal conditions, we keep both the coolant and oil flaps in the automatic position. They will automatically open and close based on the temperature. We just do a quick test to make sure they're working. We flip our safety switches and we just manually move the flaps just a little bit. Okay, we're almost ready to start. I just want to show you one more thing. Here are your climate controls. This is your fresh air vent, just brings in clean air from the outside. This is your heated air vent, which you can adjust until the cabin is comfortable. And here's a very important piece, your defroster. This defroster throws hot air on your front windscreen. Exactly the same as the defroster in your car, keeps that window warm and keeps it clear. Okay, and lastly in the radio, you can adjust your frequencies here in this convenient little 2D panel, and you can then select the frequencies here. Now I'm ready to start the engine, but we're going to keep our ignition off until we count six blades. This is very important because this allows for oil to circulate throughout the engine before combustion begins. Remember, oil is the lifeblood of this engine. Without oil, the direct metal-on-metal -metal friction would heat up and seize this engine in a matter of minutes. It's also important to understand that even on a mild day, the oil in this engine is cold. In any aircraft, not just a P-51, once that engine is started up, your eyes are on that oil pressure gauge because if you're not getting oil pressure within, say, 15, 20 seconds, you need to shut that engine down immediately. Now, keep in mind, this oil pressure is going to be slow to rise, but when it rises, it's going to go well beyond the green arc. This is normal, and this is also why you want to keep this idle as low as you can until that oil heats up and the pressure comes down. Okay, let's start this engine. All right, fuel boost on. Okay, with a cold engine, we use our electric primer for about four seconds. Here we go. Two, three, four, five, six. Little primer, okay, and mixture to run. Oil pressure's coming up. See how high that oil pressure goes? Gotta bring that idle as low as you can without stalling the engine. So you bring the throttle down a bit. Oh. You see what makes this a challenge is the engine is cold. So we just kinda keep it right around 800 to 1000 RPM until we warm up. But you're typically waiting on that oil because it takes that the longest to heat up. We're now idling nicely at about 800 RPM, and you can see the oil pressure is just above the red line, which is normal until the oil heats up. If you were to do an engine run-up with cold oil, that oil pressure could reach up to 200 PSI, and the engine is at high risk of springing oil leaks, so you have to watch that oil pressure. Now that we're waiting for the engine to warm up, let me show you an important feature with your P-51's yaw and rudder control. 
During the production of the earlier P-51 B and C models, these aircraft were experiencing some structural failures due to a high rate of yaw or side force. So a technical order was issued to fix the problem. This is why all P-51Ds have this dorsal fin and also a reverse rudder boost tab. This trim tab is designed to move in advance and ahead of the rudder. This is called reverse boost because it essentially makes it harder for the pilot to use the rudder, making it less effective. The P-51D is meant to fly straight and fast, and thanks to this technical order, it's a safer aircraft to fly. All right, let's get back in the cockpit. You'll probably notice that as this engine is warming up, it's running a little better. Let's start taxiing to the runway. Now, just for this video, to demonstrate our ground physics, I'm gonna taxi fast. Whether you are on grass or a taxiway, you do need to use S-turns in the P-51 Mustang because you cannot see over the nose. If you keep your stick aft of neutral, you actually have about six degrees of steering available to you. For tighter turns, move the stick forward, which will make it free castering. It's really a brilliant feature. Stick aft, you have a steerable tailwheel. Stick forward, it's free castering for tight turns. If handled correctly, the Mustang is a stable aircraft, both in the air and on the ground. There is a right way to take off with your P-51 Mustang, and there is also, I don't want to say wrong way, but a more aggressive, less safe way. Let me first show you this more aggressive and not so safe way. The difference all comes down to how fast you advance the throttle. So I'm just gonna take this throttle and go right to takeoff power. Falling to the left, we're giving a right rudder. Oh. Oh, okay. What happened is I reloaded my flight and selected my aft tank, which did not have any fuel. I kept this in the video because what you saw is the aircraft was running on the fuel that was in the lines just before takeoff. So you witnessed Akisim fuel starvation. All right, well, we survived that takeoff, but it was not pretty, okay? Now let's do it the safer way. First, let's select that left fuel tank. Now remember, unless you're on a very short runway, there is no reason to rush to full takeoff power. So what we do is we hold our brakes and slowly advance our throttle until we reach about 35 inches manifold pressure. Once I reach 35, I'll release the brakes. Let the aircraft start to roll down the runway. Now very gradually apply power. See, you're gonna stay ahead of this aircraft. As the tailwheel becomes lighter, you're gonna be compensating with a little more rudder. Just let the tailwheel come off the ground on its own. A little back pressure on the stick. Bring the gear up, let the speed build, and there we go. Now to master any aircraft, you have to know how it feels in slow flight. So we just hold this attitude at low power and let the speed bleed off. And when we feel the aircraft buffet, we just release the stick and let the nose fall down. See, if you have the proper feedback, you can just ride that edge. Now, if we try holding the stick back, that's when things get a little more dicey. All right, throttle back, opposite rudder, stick forward. 
All right. Now let's see how the Mustang handles at high speed. 270 miles per hour indicated is the Mustang's corner velocity. When over this speed, hard maneuvering can overstress the aircraft. When under the speed, hard maneuvering will stall the aircraft before it reaches its structural limit. Now I'm at about 350 indicated. Let's take a hard left turn. Remember, we are now over our maximum corner velocity. See, we almost blacked out. Let's try that again. Oh. You see, we dropped below our corner velocity and we had an accelerated stall. Let's try it one more time. Okay, that was our right wing that broke loose in that turn. Let's try it the other way. You can see why knowing your corner velocity is so important. If you also notice, our left wing stalled in that turn. That's not always the case, but the wing going into the wind tends to have the higher lift. Okay, we're now at very high altitude. We're gonna try a dive. But first, we need to put our oxygen mask on. And you'll notice the uh, oxygen is flowing. Now this is a very aggressive way to dive. We're rolling over and we're pulling back. This builds the speed up rapidly. Now we have our structural failures turned off in FSX right now, but, but I just wanted to show you this. What's new to our AccuSim core engine with the P-51 is Mach drag. The airframe is just pushing on this Mach wall right now. Right now, this plane is at high risk of structural failure. I have very little elevator control now. I have to use my trim to pull out, which is one of your last resorts. Now watch as we slow down how things change. You see that? We're nice and smooth. I'm doing about 450 miles per hour indicated. I'm not gonna waste this energy. I'm gonna do a low level pass in this airfield. is fogging up, yet our windscreen is staying clear. Right now, this warmer air down at sea level has a lot more moisture in it. It's hitting that cold canopy and fogging up. So that's why I was saying before, keep that defroster on and your windshield will stay clear. Okay, we're just gonna get this aircraft quickly on the ground. Uh, we'll try to get a proper landing tutorial out for you later. Coming in really hot here. Right. Really gotta fly this plane. Right. Now I just raised my flaps right away because I came in so hot. I wanted to settle this aircraft. Normally you'd probably want to keep the flaps down because you get that extra drag.
We are pulling to the right. Let me show you something. Okay, you can see here in the maintenance hangar, it's showing a warning for our left brakes. And also our crew chief has written it down in his notes that you can read. This here is just one small example of why AccuSim continues over these past years to gain more and more popularity. This aircraft not only models all of these systems deeply, but the states are persistent. If I choose not to fix these brakes, they're just going to keep pulling and they're going to get worse and worse and probably get a lot louder as well. Also, for even more detail, you can click on check engine. Here you can see the basic status of your engine. You can also give yourself a quick impression check just to make sure your cylinders are all healthy and strong. Now keep in mind that all of the internal components modeled in AccuSim persist. Over time it wears down, things break, fuel gets burned, oil gets consumed, uh, even hydraulic fluid, oxygen, everything. It gets consumed. So AccuSim pilots are used to really caring for the aircraft because it, now it matters. Every time you load the simulation, you're not going to get a fresh new aircraft. It just doesn't work that way in the real world, and therefore we don't want it that way in AccuSim. Okay, I want to say at A2A Simulations, we're very grateful for the community that we serve. We follow our passion. We're also fortunate to have Dudley Henriquez on our team, who brings with him an extensive background of flying and instructing in the P-51 Mustang. We thank Vlad Olenek, Chris Baranaskis, Rich Palmer, and Glenn Wegman, both aircraft owners and Mustang mechanics respectively, answering all of our questions and giving us access to their beautiful airplanes flying today. I hope you all have enjoyed the video and we cannot wait to release our AccuSim P-51 Mustang. Thank you. So Jakers, how was it, Jake? Awesome. Maybe time, Jakers. Maybe time. So Jakey, how is it different from the cup? How do you describe uh, this being different? You don't get the stick in the back. There's a button for the radio. All right. Um, it's a little more claustrophobic. In the cup? No, in this. In this, all right. Um, this is more loud. Yeah. Harder to speak in the radio. Um, it's a very steep. G-force turns. Oh, you did some high yeah. G turns. Did you feel the? Uh, you feel like you're. Yeah, I couldn't even get up. All right, Jake, you're speeding. Yeah.